On allegations, he defrauded hundreds of thousands of donors out of money they thought was going to fund the border wall. The former president didn't seem to mind. Bannon was charged with fleecing his loyal followers out of money and pardoned Bannon in his final hours in office. More now on the man who seemingly has never been far from the former president, who always relishes a fight. CNN's Tom Foreman has this. He is not ready to speak to Congress about the violence of January 6th, but Steve Bannon is talking plenty on his daily podcast, whipping his followers into a frenzy. Elections have consequences. Stolen elections have catastrophic consequences, and that's what we're seeing in this country right now. And we need your blood to boil. We need to be in a situation you're not going to back down, okay? He's done it all along. He appeared to confirm reports that just days before the insurrection, he was on the phone with Donald Trump discussing how to kill the Biden presidency in the crib. 42% of the American people, 42% of the American people think that Biden did not win the presidency legitimately. We told you from the very beginning, just expose it, just expose it, never back down, never give up, and this thing will implode. Promoting the big lie of election fraud fits Bannon's long-standing affection for radical right-wing theories and his apparent appetite for conflict. If you think they're going to give you your country back without a fight, you are sadly mistaken. Take his fascination with the book The Fourth Turning, which argues every 80 years or so, cataclysmic upheavals are necessary to political and social realignment. Turnings are like the seasons. Every turning is necessary. Bannon was so taken with the idea, he made a movie about it, savaging liberals, blasting traditional government, and as one film critic put it, pushing a clear message. Bring on the apocalypse. There's an almost um, fetishistic desire to see everything blow up. It's almost like he's inviting a cleansing fire to, to just raise the edifice, raise the institutions. I think it's that dramatic. Steve Bannon is over here, Steve Bannon. Bannon's turns in the spotlight have not always thrilled his most famous boss, who is reportedly annoyed when Bannon showed up on the cover of Time, which Trump clearly craves. He was pushed out of Trump's immediate orbit, but never far away. I would love to know what advice you would give to Donald Trump if he didn't leave even after he lost. Because I saw Hillary Clinton. You're obsessed with this. I am obsessed You're with obsessed this. You're obsessed with it. Why do you think he's not going to leave? Wait a second. Just because I know he's well, having the time of his Because he's an insane narcissist. <laughs> and since the uprising, Bannon has been firmly in the losing candidate's corner, trotting out guests to insist the riot was the work of Antifa and undercover federal agents. 226 Antifa members were tasked with making that what should have been a peaceful protest a, a riot and insisting prosecutors are dead wrong to say these are Trump's and his people. Either they're totally incompetent or they're lying to you, right? They're either totally incompetent or they're lying to you. They're either totally incompetent or they're lying to you. Pick them. There are no facts to back that up, but listen to Bannon's podcast, watch his interviews, and you will see that he has very little use for facts unless they back this notion that America as we know it must end so America as he would have it can begin. Mm -hmm. Anderson? Tom, appreciate it. Tom Foreman.